Oh boy. Yeah. All right. So when the teacher does one in class, it's never as hard as the ones on the homework. You wanted a hard one? I got it right here. Oh, but if you're here because you don't know how to put it in the My Math Lab, that part's going to be at the end, which is probably around seven minutes from now. So this is going to be a long, hard one. And here we go. We're trying to graph the polynomial. This one, 6x to the third minus 7x squared minus 17x plus 3. T, T, T. So what do we first need to do? <clears throat> we need to find the zeros. And how are we going to do that? Ah, uh, probably with synthetic division. And yeah, this is the whole thing, start to finish. So I need to list the possible rational zeros. And that's the lagging divided by the leading. So down here, it's the factors of 3, 3, 1, and the factors of 6. 1, 2, 3, and 6. Because 1 times 6 is 6, 2 times 3 is 6, 6. So my possible rational zeros are 1 divided by 1, 1 divided by 2, 1 divided by 3, 1 divided by 6, 6. So then I do the same thing with 3. Tee 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 and one more. 1, 2, 3, 6. All of these, yeah, are possible rational zeros and the plus and minus of all of those. So you goes and you start dividing. You try a 1, you try a 3, you try a 6. Those are the ones that make sense, so those don't work. And it takes you a while to get to this drippy one. Yeah, I got drip. I don't think that's what they mean. Oh, especially not when it's green. So I'm just going to stay up all night and get lucky and put a 1, 6 out here. Why? Um, Just because, oh my god, it's so wet. That's a, there's a, those are those wet markers. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so then that's a 6 because I bring it all down. Six Six times a sixth is a one, fun. That's a minus six, six. So, um, six times that, yeah, that's a minus one, all right? That's a minus 18. And then a sixth of 18 is a three, t -he, t -he, and we got a zero. Oh, boy. Now, all right, this one, I told you, it's, 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 it, it ain't easy. Yeah, so what does that mean? That's 6x squared minus 6x minus 18. And then that's going to be times x minus 1, 6, 6. So then you need to find the zeros of that. And you divide by the rest of these. You exhaust that list. Um, it takes a while. So you exhaust that list. And then um, you decide you got to use the quadratic formula. Oh, my goodness. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Oh, let me take a picture. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. TikTok, man. Grow up. All right. Yeah. Oh, boy. So you found that the other two zeros were um, minus 1 minus the square root of 13 and minus 1 plus the square root of 13, both of those divided by 2, and that was the 6 that you found by division. Oh god, oh god! So that went into this after you factored the common 6 out. That's the thing that you used the quadratic formula on. x is equal to minus b plus and minus square root. So then what? You go and you're going to test the intervals. So you put your zeros on a number line. Then what? Now you need to test numbers in between those. But this is the hard example. This is the long example. This is the one where um you... Uh, you ready for an advanced technique? Advanced technique. Yeah. All right. Let's look at the leading term test since we're going to have to do it anyway. Mm. The leading term test. All right. The polynomial's end behavior. Oh, yeah. You remember that one. <laughs> Woo! So, the polynomial's end behavior. Yeah. Oh, behave is determined by its leading term since that is um, a positive number. It's going to end up. And since this is odd, it's going to end opposite. So, yeah, it came from the bottom. Now it's here. That's a little one that you'll see some later bits. Whoa, whoa. So I know this. And what else do I know? I know that each one of these zeros 
is a zero of multiplicity one. So what does that mean? That means it's gonna cross at each one of those crossings. That's what that means. So if I get in here without being so mean, I know it's gonna come from down here. It's gonna end up there and it's going to cross at all of those because it's multiplicity one. It's a long, hard one. So if I can step some skips here and there, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. But what would you normally do? You would test intervals. So you would put numbers in there like is zero. Zero is a nice number. So here we find out that zero, when you evaluate it, it turns into three. So this point right here, that point right there is zero, three. Yeah. Okay. So then what? Um, minus one. Why did I pick that one? Because it was a nice number that was around this one. So then I picked a minus one right there and then that one was seven. But I'm trying to test intervals. Oh, it should have been a little higher. <laughs> okay. And then um, I just check, check two. Two is, is right here. So two is right here and it turns out that one's minus 11. So... You go to graph those, and then you're in the my math lab. All right, so that's really kind of why we're making this, because you like get to this problem, you're like, it doesn't fit the other ones. Now, on the other ones, you would plot the zeros. Yeah, and then you would do the x or the y intercept, and then you would, it would, all you need is four points for a, per, for a cubic. That's what this is. It's to the power of three. All you need is I think I'm right there at that six minute mark. Seven minute mark, what did I say? Okay, so yeah, 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 yeah. We were talking about graphing it in my math lab. All you need is four points for um graphing a cubic. All right, slowing it down. Well, there's your four points right there. I went and I got them for you. What did I do? I picked the nice numbers that were around the zeros. Why did I do that? Because then my polynomial, I knew that it was like at least a little bit closer to the axis. Why did I know that? Because those were closer to the zeros and the zeros is where the polynomial crossed it. So I choose some nice zeros. I choose the choice, choiciest choice of zero because when that's available, that's good. Then I chose something near minus one, minus one. And then I chose something near two, 2.32 and I got nice numbers because I was using nice numbers and the nice numbers that's the stuff you can plot in the my math lab so go find three additional points along with the zero that it gave you and then what do we have here at one sixth we have a zero and then and then at zero we have a zero at three and then at minus one we have a we have Okay, that zero was a y-intercept. And then at minus three, I was way up there at seven. And then at deuces, before I say bye-bye, deuces was minus 11. So then here, it, there we go. Okay, wait, there should be another crossing point right there. Yeah, there is one, it's that one. And then this goes up. There is the y-intercept when x is equal to zero. And then it comes back down. And there should be a zero there too. Oh, yeah, that was that zero. So that was the long, hard one.